This iconic Minoan symbol is often thought to represent a sacrificial altar in the shape of horns. It was archaeologist Arthur Evans who gave them the name Horns of Consecration, likely inspired by the fact that the palace sites of the Minoans were filled with imagery of bulls. He described the symbol as an article of ritual furniture and believed it to be directly related to the sacrifice of oxen. But more recent scholarship argues that the symbol has a different meaning entirely. Let's look at some Minoan objects for more clues in understanding the significance of this symbol. Here's a stone vessel made from steatite, perhaps used by a Minoan priestess to pour liquid offerings in honor of the deity. On its beautifully carved surface, a shrine is shown perched high in the mountains. The priestess, who we just imagined holding this object, is absent from the scene. There are no people present here. Instead, there's the song of birds and a group of wild goats. And this reoccurring symbol, both solemn and receptive, like the open arms of a worshipful devotee. The ruins of several Bronze Age sanctuaries were discovered dotted across the rugged mountains of Crete. There seems to be a strong association for the Minoans between mountains and divinity. This clay model depicts a very odd kind of sanctuary, an uncanny marriage of architecture and symbolic language. The shrine and the mountain have become one, and three gateways are visible, perhaps symbolizing a threshold between the earthly and spiritual realms. The Minoans were an intellectually curious and adventurous people. At around 1600 BC, Crete was not an isolated place, but at the very center of a cosmopolitan world. The people from these various lands traveled extensively by ship, trading precious goods and sharing their ideas with one another, the evidence of which can be seen in their use of symbols. Compare the Minoan symbol we've discussed with the Egyptian hieroglyph on the right, known as Akhet. It depicts a mountain and the sun, and is translated as horizon, or the place in the sky where the sun rises. The Akhet also appears in the Egyptian name for the Great Pyramid of Giza, Akhet Khufu, or the horizon of Pharaoh Khufu. The Great Pyramid itself can be considered as a massive gateway, through which the deceased king would become a god. In this region of the world during the Bronze Age, the monarchy were regarded as both political leaders and earthly representatives of the divine. Their awe-inspiring palaces and temples were viewed as a kind of central axis within the cosmos. Here's the Akhet again, but this time, a figure emerges from the gateway of a mountain, holding the solar disk in her hands. And here's the Babylonian sun god, Shamash, who rises up between the mountain. If we use these clues to interpret the Minoan symbol as a mountain gateway, then perhaps the empty space in the middle conveys the concept of the deity, felt but not seen, both real and unreal. After all, the mountain, the sun, the deity, they all represent the vast unknown, that which cannot be comprehended by the mind, but only experienced through personal epiphany. If you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button to be notified when the next part is released.